Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Full Court Press. I am your host, Drew Duncan. Do not forget that Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram is all at Drew Duncan 83. Additionally, you can find me on YouTube. Simply look for Drew Duncan. And of course, the Full Court Press is on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram as well. And don't forget that you can listen to us wherever you listen to podcasts. Simply tell your device to play the Full Court Press by Drew Duncan. 32 teams, 32 days in the NFL. The focal point, the Miami Dolphins. And yeah, I'll admit, today's teams were predicated upon watching the games last night. (laughs) I'm just going to keep it really real with you. Um, Look, as I've already said, when I talked about the Jacksonville Jaguars, look, last night was a game where I looked and I saw two teams starting out like the way they would any other football game, kind of probing a little bit, looking to see what they can do. One of the things that they discussed, particularly with the Miami Dolphins and Josh Rosen, who's probably not going to be the starter going into week one. Most people project that it'll be Ryan Fitzpatrick, old Fitzy. is you can't really evaluate a quarterback off of one season. Now, that's something that I've been saying for a long time, right? And I've even admitted I'm not the biggest fan of Josh Rosen going back to his collegiate days, right? But I think that if you draft somebody, you give them more than a year. Now, I understand that an athlete like a Kyler Murray is not something you get every day. It looks like it to a lot of people because you look around, you you see a Cam Newton, you see a Russell Wilson, and you go, all these guys are, you know, They're a dime a dozen. Well, they're not. They're really not. How many quarterbacks are really in this NFL league? We got two, three to a team? Come on. And how many of them are starters? How many of them are capable of sustainability? Not everybody's a Tom Brady and can play till they're 41, 42, whatever he's going to play till, you know? Get contract extensions. Not everybody's a Drew Brees, right? We still talk about 37-year-old Ben Roethlisberger. Don't we say those things? And one of the things they brought up was how do you evaluate somebody after a single season, especially behind that Cardinals offensive line, and now they're saying that the Dolphins offensive line, to be quite frank, is really no better. Well, again, it's really difficult to look at a preseason game and completely be able to evaluate it. But when I look at last night, I don't know if I saw an offensive line that is not that good with the Miami Dolphins or defensive line with the Jacksonville Jaguars that is still exceptionally dominant. That's what we have to ask ourselves. And it's really difficult to know because the starters are not playing a full four quarters right now. And they're not playing for really anything significant, so to speak. And let's be honest, Rosen looked decent last night. If we're going to start evaluating preseason football, Rosen looked pretty good. He was making throws on the run. He was showing a lot of mobility in the pocket. He was showing poise under pressure. You look good. And he's one of those guys that, what if he's like another Drew Brees, right? He's kind of billed as maybe being a failure. He's not that great. He goes somewhere else, and then he makes a long-term name for himself somewhere else, and you go, why'd you pass on that guy? Because I, I think that there are a lot of people who believed and still believe that Drew Brees sort of still carries that around with him. Like, how dare you disrespect me like this? Is Josh Rosen going to start carrying some of that around with him? You know, look, there are some quarterbacks that sort of play with that quiet chip on their shoulder. And whether or not it goes away, we may never really know. They may say, oh, I got over that a long time ago. But did you really? Because we all know that football players, athletes in general, it's really all about ego, man. It really is. Sometimes it's just a dude thing, right? It's just all about that ego. Here's the thing, though. Even if 
they look good offensively when all is said and done this year. Let's just say that somehow, some way, they're able to kind of put together a good offense, whether it's under Ryan Fitzpatrick leading it or Josh Rosen leading it. Defensively, how good is this team? Because, you know, the Jaguars started out by throwing a lot of, like, flat routes, um, you know, some simple outs, Leonard Fournette, some kind of basic pitch sweep plays. And then the next thing you know, they start taking some quick hitters downfield and happen that quick. So the defensive backfield is something that I would say I may be concerned with if I'm a Miami Dolphins fan. Who, by the way, unless you forgot, just made Xavier Howard the highest paid cornerback in NFL history, right? Wasn't it a five-year deal or $76 million, $46 million guaranteed somewhere in that neighborhood? Coming off of a season with seven INTs, his career best. But can one guy lock down one side and then lock down another side? He may shut his side of the field down. But does that leave a glaring gap on the other side of the football field? It's going to be a matchup thing. It's going to be where are we lining everybody up thing. And going into this season, because again, I think Miami is one of those teams that given some of the changes that they made, especially at the quarterback position this year, could potentially look at last season and just forget all about it, right? Different head coach, different quarterback, little bit of a defense in the backfield up front. We're going to see what they're made of. And they're going to be playing a physical Baltimore Ravens team come week one. Then they got a divisional game with the New England Patriots. Then they're going to be at Dallas. Then they got the Chargers and they have Washington. Then again, another tough divisional game with Buffalo, one of the best defensive football teams in all the NFL last year. I believe they ranked third overall. Then they're going to be at Pittsburgh. Then another divisional game with the Jets. It is not an easy schedule. And then, in back-to-back weeks, another divisional game with Buffalo. Then at Cleveland. It's going to be a tough ride for this football team. By the way, they close out the season divisionally against the New England Patriots. This is not going to be easy for the Miami Dolphins this season. I wouldn't expect a whole lot. Maybe seven wins. If they're going to win 10 or 11 games and make a push for the playoffs or even the division, which I don't know that anybody can right now with Tom Brady still being with the Patriots, And that wide receiving core that they have over there may be the best in all the NFL, and I've said that time and time again, provided that they're all healthy and playing together. If they're going to make a push for 10 or 11 wins, defensively, this football team is going to have to step up. We're going to find out if that offensive line is the real deal or not this year. This year. And if the offensive line can perform, they can find some balance in the running game create a little controversy with the quarterback position. You don't want to draw too big of a line in the sand, and you want to figure it out quick because you don't want to see another Joe Montana, Steve Young situation. Not saying those guys are those caliber. I'm just saying in terms of quarterback competition, it can get too thick, and players start choosing size, and you start losing the locker room. Those are things you don't want to happen. You're going to have to make that decision from the jump, and you're just going to have to stick with it unless things get really bad which they could for this football team, given some of the physical football teams that they are going to have to play because Miami right now is much more of a finesse team, and I just don't think that they can match up with most of the teams that they're going to be playing this season, especially out of the conference or out of the division, pardon me. Guys, I am Drew Duncan, host of the Full Court Press. Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram is all at Drew Duncan 83 Additionally, you can find me on YouTube. Simply look for Drew Duncan. And, of course, the Full Court Press is on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram as well. And as always, don't you dare touch that dial.